Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 7, Episode 4. This is a recap, and there will be spoilers, so if you don't want to know about them, then don't watch until after you've watched the program. And please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you would. That would be so helpful to me. And I forgot to say, let's get started, which I do, of course, want to say. So here are our participants with their self-portraits. This is one of my favorite parts of the program because we get to see how the artists want to show themselves to the world. And we know that it's a very rigorous process to get on the program and that many of these people have applied more than once. <laughs> So it must be just such an exciting day. And we know that uh, they only find out a month ahead of time that they're going to be participating and they're not allowed to tell anybody. So the secrecy of that would, would be very difficult for me. I'm a bit of a, a blabbermouth amongst my friends, at least when it comes to what's going on with me. So, um, so this is a lot of fun. And more importantly, everybody looks very, very strong. I think this is gonna be a really good episode. We have a variety. We have some pastel artists. We have some oil painters, um, as usual, no watercolor painters, but that's to be expected by now. That's a very unusual presentation, so we'll see what she does today. And there's the final one. I mean, every one of these people is very, very capable, but it's gonna be a nerve-wracking day, and nerves are going to have an effect on what happens here. So our first model up is James Nesbitt. He is an actor. I've seen him in comedies. I've seen him in dramas. And he was extremely friendly and was carrying on conversations with people. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around. We get our first look at what they've done. And James is going to pick one of these to go home, which has nothing to do with the final judging. So here's the first one up. It's a very, very good painting. I don't have any problem with the painting at all. It's interesting to me that it's leaned so heavily on kind of a gray and, and very, very muted colors. Well, I guess he was in muted colors. I just, it's just interesting to me that that black and gray are so predominant. That would not have been where I would have gone, only because for me, I like to do color value swap outs where I can have a neutral, but have as much color in the neutral as I possibly can. And there definitely are greens in those neutrals. There's actually quite a bit of mixing of reds, oranges, and um, uh, green in order to create those neutrals. So it, there's a very cohesive uh, color mixing going on there. So that's that's a very good job and also speaks to that this person has spent time on paper or canvas and, and knows what they're doing. But it does not have a likeness to the sitter. Uh, and I don't have an explanation for that. But nerves could be at play. We, we just don't know. So the next one up is also predominantly black. <laughs> this is... Uh, you know, what we have here, I guess what I'm uh, taking a long time to say, this one looks a little bit more like he does, but I think what's happening here is that all of these painters were really matching what they saw and matched the colors on their palette to what they saw. And I just really prefer when an artist will take some uh, leeway and make a swap out. They'll swap out the color for the same value, but choose a different color and use that. And I just, I, I call it color value swap outs and I have videos about it. And I just think that would have been more effective. Uh, in this particular heat, nobody decided to do that. But I also noticed that in their um, self portraits, they didn't do it either. So this is very consistent with the style of each one of these painters in this particular heat who painted James. So we pull back from far away and it's a strong painting and that's important. There's nothing tentative about it and that's nice because the winner is going to do a final commission that's gonna appear on a gallery wall. And so it has to read a little more strongly than it would in say your home. Remember our homes have pretty small rooms compared to what a gallery setting would be. Here's a third painting again, a very much uh, I'm, I'm, I don't mean this in a derogatory way. I just use the, the phrase matchy, 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 matchy painter, matching what you see to what you have on your palette. And that's a very legitimate way to paint. It just doesn't happen to be the kind of painting that I really respond to and will, will remember over time. So these kinds of images that match what you see kind of um, fade away from me in my memory. So 
I don't know if that's a personal preference or just that uh, I've seen, you know, I'm an older person and I've seen a lot of art, and so I prefer artists who might make different judgments. Okay, James is going to pick one to go home, and let's see which one he picks. Now, he picks the one that actually did look the most like him and probably was the str strongest of the three, but I think he had a bit of a conundrum. Not st since Stanley Tucci have we seen uh, three artists not be able to nail the likeness. But that's what happened. Okay, Pam Hogue, I believe that's how you pronounce her name, is the next one up. She is a designer. Now, we've had other designers on the program, and they tend to dress in a very exaggerated way. Now, she's not dressed in an exaggerated way, but she has a lot of makeup on. A lot of makeup on. Oh, that, that is just unusual for us as portrait painters, I think. We are usually used to see, to a more natural look on the face, and that more natural look allows us to find, you know, the uh, planes of the face, you know, where, where places go in, where places go out. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around, and Pam gets her first look at the paintings. Now, the first one up, I think, is a really, really strong contender. Hashtag Joe is always wrong. I'm not always wrong, but I'm nearly almost wrong, always wrong in... Uh, agreeing with the judges, but mo I do watch the judging with the sound off. I don't watch the program with the sound off, but I do watch the judging with the sound off because I don't want to be influenced by them, and quite frankly, they, they sometimes um, make me not enjoy the program as much as I want to. So this is very reminiscent of the winner that we had last year. So I think that might count against her. I, I'm not, I, I, I think this, in the end, is the strongest painting of the day, but I I. It's going to be, well, we'll see what happens, of course, if she's chosen and if she goes on to the semifinals, but it's very reminiscent of the winner last year. And that, that might be a sticking point for the judges because they, they do speak very openly about wanting a variety of artists, a variety of styles, and to find up-and-coming voices. And this might be too reminiscent of the winner last year. Now, the next one up is very unusual. Um, not when you look at it here, it, this person did two separate paintings, which is fine. I mean, why not? If I was there, I probably would have done three or four because I move, I, I work very, very quickly. But when we pull back, we can see the reason why this person probably won't be moving on. And that's because they are so gosh darn small. And that's just not going to work for the final commission. The piece in the final commission has to be of a certain size, and this just and and his self portrait was very very small as well. So the combination of being monochromatic as well as the size of the work, I, I just don't think this person is going to go through to be one of the final three of today's program. Now this one, this one was hard for me. Oh boy, this one was hard for me because uh, you know I think the artist is young and and inexperienced, and and that's fine. But you can tell how flat it is. It just doesn't reveal forms. It's someone who's still painting around forms or out. There's a lot of outlining going on is what I'm trying to say. And it's really very tight and controlled. Now, the background wants to indicate that it's free-flowing and, and uh, emerging from the canvas, but, but it's not. The actual figure looks like it was done somewhere else and then pasted on. It, it just, this one just doesn't work for me at all. And um, when we pull back, it's so isolated in the, in, on the canvas in terms of where she's placed it that, uh, you know, in terms of composition, it's just extremely weak work for me. And bless her heart, I don't have the guts to even, you know, if I was there, I could never apply to the program. So, uh, please understand, this is subjective, and, and I honor her do, I honor her all the way. Anyway, she's the one that Pam chooses. <laughs> so Pam's taking this one home, and, uh, and she's about as surprised as I was. But uh, good for her, because that's a real honor, you know, real honor. And, um, you know, this, this program can change people's lives, so good for her. Now, Ray BLK, which is pronounced Ray Black, is a musician. And she came in in such unusual clothing. I was so surprised. She was determined to keep that hood up. Uh, I think she took it down. Oh, the, the phone rang. I forgot to take it out into a different room. I'm so sorry. I tried to edit it out. I hope it got it edited out. So she has her hood up. And we are going to see 
what happens four hours in. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around, and here's our first look. And boy, this looks really promising. I think this is going to be the strongest group of the day. So that's exciting. So let's take a look at the first one. Now the first one, nailed it. I mean, that looks like her. And I'm so happy to see that because so far we, we, we haven't seen the strongest painting like we have in other episodes. And I do stand by that overall. I do think the program gets stronger and stronger and stronger, but, but we kind of started out a little slow. This is a really beautiful piece, really lovely. Now she was wearing quite a bit of makeup as well, but I think the artist handled it ex extremely well. And uh, yeah, see, that's beautifully done. Now we know they were using technology because that's the only way you could d uh, put eyelashes in. You know, it's the only way you're gonna see those kinds of details is if you have some kind of piece of technology with you. But I don't think they relied just on technology because when you pull back, the work really stands up. The work has, um, you know, it has a, um, it has a real painterly look. Oh, I know you. I know people who are fans of the program hate the word painterly, so I shouldn't have used that. But the reason I used it is because there's just your work behind her that shows movement in the background. Now, this one I think is equally as strong. It's a beautiful, beautiful job. I believe this might be a pastel. When we get closer up, we'll have a better idea if it is or not. So it's a smaller piece. And I remember her self-portrait, which was exquisite. Yeah, that's really strong. Ooh, I'm a big fan of this one. Ooh, I'm a very big fan of this one. Um, wow. Really, really beautifully done. Uh, and sensitively done. And there's there's so many exciting colors here. We've got cerulean blue in there. We've got the violet from the makeup, I guess. But but there are other color, color value swap outs going on. Look at that one piece of orange slipped in on the eyebrow. That's the kind of enhancement that, oh, and it's on the nose too. Yeah, this person has really good control over not only value, but temperature, you know, warmth and coolness. Now, this person does not. This is, this is what I was talking about in terms of, I love a color value swap out. And this is all color value swap out. But it's so much color value swap out that for me, it it becomes, I don't know how to use the word other than discordant or disturbing in some way. I, further away, it gets a little bit better and is a little bit more cohesive. But um, for me, there's, there's a midline. You know, do your color value swap outs, but have it also anchored into a certain degree of realness. And this one just went too far for me. And I... Um, but all three of these people nailed, nailed a likeness, and that had not happened until we got to this particular uh, chunk of the program. Chunk? That's not a good word, is it? Oh, well. Ray Black is going to pick one to take home. And, uh, yeah, I'm surprised. Oh, boy. I'm not enjoying that hand in the front. Oh, boy. Not enjoying that hand. I didn't see that until we pulled back. Well, we will move on. So now the fine, now the judging begins. This is not the final judging, but the judges pick three people they're going to pull out to go on to the finals of this episode, but only one person will go on to the semifinals. Now, we know what a nerve-wracking day this is. We know you have to get up early. We know you have to be there at 7.30. We know that you're interrupted with interviews. So... Gosh, just to be able to do this at all is amazing. Now, this is, a, I think, a, an extremely strong piece for all the reasons we already talked about. Look at the work on that fur. That's just kind of delicious. That's probably what made me say painterly. You can see, you know, they loaded the brush. You can, you can tell it's a painting. I like something when it tells you what it is. You know, I'm a painting. I'm a drawing. I'm a pastel. I like it. I like something to announce what it is. This one is just too monochromatic for me overall. And uh, doesn't nail him, uh, you know, the likeness quite as well as uh, the other two finalists on this program have. But we still have a ways to go on the judging in order to determine who will be the winner. And the next one up is, again, this is one that I thought would win for the day. I don't know if she will or, or won't, but is I am feeling is too reminiscent of last year's winner to win the program. But... but um, but I do hope they advance her. But I also want them to advance the one who did uh, that great job on the fur 
and got a likeness as well. And they're not going to pick two people to go ahead, which uh, I wish they would. Anyway, here are, this is my favorite part of the program. We have the self-portraits next to what they did today. The self-portraits they had time to work on, and the one they had today was only four hours. And the fact that he could get that done in four hours is pretty darn as outstanding. I mean, wow. I think there's also consistency. I mean, you could see that this is done by the same artist. So, you know, that's something that can really define a, a professional artist. You want to see consistency over time. And uh, it looks like he's got that going on. So he, he's going to be a strong contender. The next one up is not nearly as consistent. Wow. Um, I'm trying to look closely and see. I think, well... See, it looks like a pastel on the left and a painting on the right, so it might be the medium that is inconsistent here, but which is fine. It's just, I wouldn't think that she was the artist that would have, on the left, that did the one on the right. If anything, the one on the left looked like she had less time. That's that's something I have to think about for a while. That's that's unusual. But I, I really do like, actually, I really, really like both of those paintings. Um, so... Good for her. Now this one, <laughs> I mean, I enjoy the humor of that, of course. Uh, and it, and she did get a correct likeness to her own self, but but the likeness was missing on the uh, on the show today when it came to painting James. So I don't know how that's going to factor in. Sometimes they really care about getting a likeness, and sometimes they don't care at all. So who knows? So now we get to the final judging. Gosh, this must be the most exhausting thing ever by the end of the day. You must just be running on fumes. The final judging, we get to see all three semifinalists, but only one will be chosen to go on. There they are with the pieces they did today. They're good-sized pieces to do in four hours, I've got to say. Good job. But uh, it makes me sad. Oh, yeah, the program always makes me a little sad. I want the one on uh, right and the middle one to go on ahead. I think they once picked two people to go ahead, but it's a very rare thing, so it's not going to happen. Uh, the winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Oh, the winner is this one. Well, yay. Yeah, that's not a pastel. No, that's a painting. So, um, as I said, I think it's too reminiscent of last year's winner to take the prize, but I'm going to be really curious to see her compete in the semifinals. So, remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value and mix for color, and please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.